grateful to God for all that he's doing. Grateful to God for this man of God. Amen. And I'm excited about the word that God has given him for us today. So without further ado, put your hands together for Pastor Blank. Love you, baby. I love you, too. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, if you will, get your Bibles and let's go uh, open it to the first uh, book of the Bible, Genesis, the beginning. And I want to start, if you will, at uh, chapter 3, Genesis. Chapter 3 is uh, where things went bad. You ever been watching a movie and everything is going well and everything, you say, I know something's going to happen. If they're getting along too well, something is getting ready to happen. And that's kind of the theme of a movie. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy gets girl back kind of things go astray, and then some kind of way it gets back uh, together again. Uh, <clears throat> in Genesis third chapter, I am grateful this morning uh, for a place to come to, to fellowship uh, with you, people of like mind, uh, trying to do the same thing that you're trying to do. Uh, and to study God's word. God's word facilitates, hey Brenda, uh, God's word facilitates faith. Faith is not me uh, going to get some oil, putting it on your head, and uh, talking about you getting ready to get up and you got stage five cancer and all this kind of stuff. That's not faith. It's just not faith. Faith is uh, uh, taking God at his word. If God says something, then, then, then I believe it. Uh, without evidence, without seeing anything, uh, without anything changing. Uh, I just believe God. And the reason I believe God is, is because God is not a man that he should lie. Not a son of man that he should have to repent or to change his mind. You see, Sister Turner, we uh, like to tell folks, uh, you know, we say, say they're lying and something. I ain't got no reason to lie. Well, you ain't never had need to have a reason to lie. You, you, you don't need no reason to lie. Sometimes you just you just like to lie. Sometimes it just feel like a, a good lie be better than the truth. Especially if you, you sit up drinking and everything, that facilitates lying. You can't you gain drinking, not lie, don't they go together? Yeah. And, and, and so God actually uh, does not lie. Uh, and he doesn't have to come back and say, sometimes we'll say something and then we have to say, you know what, I thought it was like that. But since God has all knowledge, then God doesn't have to turn around and say, well, I was wrong about that. I have to do that myself. Sometimes I teach stuff and then people will show me where the stuff that I'm teaching uh, is wrong. And I should have enough uh, humility to admit that I was wrong about what I was teaching and, and, and this, is, this is right. So then, faith. F faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. So then, uh, if God tells me something, I don't have to, there doesn't have to be anything corporal or any type, type of substance to, I, I can't see it. But because God says it, it, then in living by faith, it's for real. Uh, in order to prove a case as a prosecutor, I have to have evidence. Uh, but my faith is the evidence of no evidence. Let me see. Don't look like the children going to do no better. Don't look like I'm going to ever have enough money to make ends meet. But because God said, I shall supply all of your needs according to my riches in glory. I'm not going to bless you according to what you got. But I'm going to bless you according to what I got. And so you, uh, you might not have a dime, but that has nothing to do with it because faith is the evidence. I got evidence that everything going to be all right. Not because of what I see. You understand that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man 
the good thing that God has prepared for them that love them. And then that is the reason that Habakkuk, Habakkuk could not understand, God, why do you operate like you operate? You, you, see, you see, it's foolish when you try to figure God out. You, you have crossed over into uh, the line of foolishness when you try to figure God out. You see, you just have to take God at his word. You just have to see that God, you said it, and so that's how it is. It don't make no sense. It don't even make no sense that God would choose you. Well, nobody else had chosen you to, to carry his word, to represent him, to be an ambassador to God. He would choose you. But you see, uh, God does what he will. He had to straighten it out with Job, didn't he? Because it just didn't make any sense. And so then Paul had to tell the church folk, you see, because church folk try to figure God out. Yeah, you just sound like a preacher. You look like you ought to be a preacher. Woo, she sure look holy. You, you, you see? But, 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 but Paul, they was looking at Paul's history, and they said, you, you, you wasn't with Jesus. You didn't walk with Jesus. You... You, you, you come late. How you get here now? You want to be uh, the apostle to the Gentiles. And, and, and Paul had to tell them. He said, look, he, he said, you know what? You're right. Uh, I don't deserve to be an apostle. I persecuted the church. He, he, you know, he said, but, but God had mercy on me. And God enabled me. But not you. Not you. You, 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 you didn't ordain me. He said, that which I have, which I have received, I promise you, I didn't receive it from man. But God, God gave me this, this right here. One reason I know, Sister Brenda Brewer, when God has really got you on a mission, you didn't ask for it. Huh? These folks are out here trying to get ordained. And these folks are out here trying to get a church. And these folks are out here trying to get a position. I don't know about you. Huh? But I, 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 I'm looking for somebody, Sheriff Bird, like Paul, that was on his way to do wrong, huh? was on his way to put folks in jail, and God caught him on his way, handcuffed him, took him hostage, yes. Yes. put him on a street called Straight. All right. And so Paul testifies, and Paul says, he says, by the grace of God, I am. I am what I am. Let me just go ahead and take my subject now. Maybe you'll understand better when I get on down. Uh, look at your neighbor. Look him right there in the eye and just tell him, say, yeah, please, please take a seat. Please take, please take a seat. Some of y'all I need to please take several seats. Just take several. So you're, you're doing you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You, you just sit, sit down somewhere and let God do what he does. You see, what we are not very cognizant of is the fact that God has never needed anyone's help. He's God all by, all by himself. Y'all ready to roll? Genesis 3, 1, the Bible said, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, have God said, ye shall not eat of, the, of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said that ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God's little G, knowing good and evil. Please take a seat. You see, prior to Genesis third chapter, uh, there was a paradise. Man's needs were made. Man had no condemnation. Uh, the problem that man has is in the present day, even after he gets saved, because of the teaching that he gets. Uh, Wednesday night teaching was very good because what God told us on Wednesday night was is that 
the teaching in the church should be directed toward the new creation, not toward the old man. You do not teach me according to what I used to be. You teach me according to what I am now. You see, uh, I got a chance to be around, uh, I can't think of his name, uh, John Walker, one of the premier lawyers in the country, not just Arkansas. And you know, many times we like to try to diminish people and say, well, they just got lucky or they was in the right place. But the man was uh, outstanding. The man had an understanding of the law that had to come from God. It didn't come from man. And one thing I heard him say was, he said that if you don't have jurisdiction, you don't have anything. What that means is, is that uh, if you are not in the proper place and you don't apply the proper rules to that place, then you are, you're out anyway. You have to have jurisdiction. So then, what we have to understand is, is that God is God all by himself. God is never going to share his glory with anyone. And so, uh, God has to, uh, Sister Pittman, God has to uh, take us through a process like we did in the Lord's Academy. We talked about Nebuchadnezzar, that he had to be broken down, and, but yet we thank God for a stomp. I'll run up out of here. I thank God that he, he took me and he broke me down, but he left something for me to come back with. If thank, thank God for a remnant. Thank God that God left you something. Let me tell you something. Most of us, from what we've been through, most of us, from what we've been through, they should have rolled us in with a towel around our neck, drooling and out of our mind. But instead of that, we bust the doors open with a praise. Instead of that, we are better, not better. Instead of that, we try. We can help people. Instead of that, we telling God that God, I thank you for everything. I, 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 <laughs> It's about 10 of y'all. You can tell, say, look here, don't feel sorry for me. The baby, don't feel sorry for me. I know you heard about I went through this and I went through that. But what I want you to know is what you don't know. Uh, do it like black folk do. That. Hold on, let me see. Hold that for me. Hold, hold that for me. Hold it right there. What you don't know. <laughs> What you don't know is, is that God was with me every step of the way. And it's a few of us, we wouldn't change a thing. God, I thank you. Because if I hadn't got in that ditch, I wouldn't know just how powerful that you are. I wouldn't know. I know him from us. Please take a seat. Here God is taking care of man and they decide that they can help God and do a better job. Y'all ready to roll? Let's run over here to Romans the fourth chapter please. You see, even after you get saved, we struggle. And so, we're so prideful. Mm -hmm. I got folks going to church here that's just like that. You're so prideful. You're going through stuff and you won't tell me nothing because you don't want folks in your business. But baby, I want you to know, can't nobody help you if we don't know what you're going through. <laughs> but you're so prideful that you were. But I want you to know uh, there's a pain that can hit you that you don't care who. You, oh, you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't care who know. Talk about it if you want to. Oh, I got Bible on it. Here this woman is, Edgar Jr. has been suffering for 12 long years. Well, what I like about the Lord is, is that you know what? The first year you say, well, you know, I... I, I don't want nobody to know my business. 
maybe the first six or seven years. You know what? You know, this ain't none of y'all concerned. I got this right here. But after 12 years, after 12 years, she said, you know what? I don't care what these folks say. I've been shut out. I've been shut out because I got an issue of blood. I'm bleeding. I've been bleeding for 12 long years. He said, well, you know what? They're not going to let you in. But you know what she said? She said, if I got to crawl, whatever I got to do. You see, the prophet, the prophet said a long time mother ago, the prophet said that when you seek him with your whole heart, then you'll find him. I want you to know, brother, he ain't far away. He can be found. But you got to get low enough. And she said, you know what? <laughs> They're not going to let me come in and sit in the pool pit. <laughs> They're not going to let me come in and sit on the deacon board. <laughs> but if I could just touch the hem of it, I know that in the hem of the garment, it's more healing than his heat. And the folk got mad and they said, what, be quiet. Hush, don't bother him. This is not that time of the service. But you know what? Blind Bartimaeus cried out and everything. He said, y'all got your sight. You can see. I'm sorry, I throw this microphone down, give me some cheese and crackers and vanilla wafers and drink. And skip all the way home. When you realize, God, I need what you got for me. I ain't studying what these folks is saying. They're going to be talking until you leave here. Ain't nobody. They, the only reason they stop talking about you because you did. Ain't nothing to talk about no more. Look what the Bible says here. How much time I got? I got time to teach this. Romans, the fourth chapter. Look what the Bible says. God has been trying in the first three chapters, mother, God has been trying to show man that you know better than anybody else. <laughs> he, first, he takes the heathen and he tells the heathen, he says, because you worship the creature more than the creator, I gave you over. You see, God is like this right here. He, he got a process. Well, you know, I put my arms out to you, but you don't need my help. And what I'm going to do is, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to stay right here until you come on back home. He said, I gave you over to a reprobate mind. What's a reprobate mind? A reprobate mind is, is when you think you know better than God knows. You seen folk like that? And that's the reason I'm not impressed with your degrees or how much money that you got. Because my granddaddy, James Adolph Edmondson Sr., told me, he said, grandson, ain't no fool like an educated fool. Ain't no fool like no educated fool. And then my grandmother, Miriam Nero Edmondson, went a little further, and she said, baby, it's a straight neck fool. I don't know what that is, but thank you, Jesus. It takes something. It takes something. You got to get that just right lick in order for you to go sit down. You rip, you run, you can't stay at home, but when you get that right lick, you can go somewhere and sit down. And so he, he shows the heathen that he's lost. Well, then somebody said, but he's a heathen and God is not shown him. He, he's not a member of the church. But God says that creation shows you there is a God. You know you didn't hang the moon and the stars. You, 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 I, there's some geese. Y'all done seen them. Every year they go to the same place. It's the same thing. And then they leave and go somewhere else. Well, you know, I, I, they ain't got no degrees. They ain't got no job. They, they got nothing, but God still takes care of them huh, where they know. And, and then the, the seasons come every year. They don't ask your permission. You're walking around. We used to call it soul training. You're walking around. You ain't bought no coat. And, and, all, and all of a sudden, one morning, it's about 30 degrees because the season changed without asking you. And you know you didn't do that. You didn't do it. And so creation shows us there has to be a God. 
Then you have the religious man, the man that don't do what you do. I won't go to the casino even to eat. You're about to starve to death. I know one time we were coming back from Memphis, me and Robert and somebody else, about us, we had been to a meeting up there, and we said, we're gonna stop at the casino up here, go strike and eat. He stayed in the car, he wouldn't get out the car. <laughs> He'll get out now, he done got hungry. <laughs> but he trying to show the religious man that, that you know better, you know better? You do the same thing that a man that don't go to church, or a man that threw you, you know, so he puts everybody in the same category. And he tells them that you are only justified by your faith. By what your faith in what Christ did on the cross, the death, burial, and resurrection is what his grace. You see, grace robbed flesh. Let me talk about flesh for a minute. And some of us, that's the reason some of the craziest folks in the world is pretty people. I never had that problem. But I've seen some pretty folk. But well, they said they got, 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 got a body made by Fisher and a mind made by Mateo. Dumb, blonde, just, just as foolish as you want to be, just as pretty. And you run after them because they're pretty, and then you, you, you out of the while you get tired of pretty because they ain't got no sense. <laughs> Habakkuk could not understand God. Why do you allow people who don't honor you to do better than folks who are your people? <sighs> he couldn't understand it. That's what made Jonah get on that ship. Because Jonah said, you want me? You see, people don't understand the love of God. The love of God is tied to the grace of God. And the love of God, God will do just for his enemies what he do for you. Because God is love. And love keeps no record of the evil that's done Love bow for all things, endure for all things. Love never fails. You want me to go to Nineveh, these folks here who take, when they capture folks, they take them and, and, and they bury them in sand and then they let the ants eat them up. This is what they do to people all the way down to their bone. And you want me to go warn them. Uh, Jonah said, I'm gonna catch me a boat. I'm gonna run away from you, God. Because you don't know what you're doing, God. You see, to walk in faith, to walk in faith, give me a hand, to walk in faith, you have to agree with God. Put the Bible down. Come on, let me go. Put, put the Bible down. Come on, walk. Let me tell you something. And that's the reason that the prophet said, give me a hand. That's the reason the prophet said, how? With your holy self. With your self-righteous self. But he said, how can two walk together except they agree except they agree and if you can't agree if you can't agree with God if you can't agree with God you can't go nowhere and many of us are trying to figure out God how is it that I go to church how is it that I love you like I do how is it that I pay my tithes how is it God that I'm as dedicated as I am but I can't get nowhere but I can't until I agree with God <laughs> and the Bible says that the flesh is enmity against God I don't care how pretty your flesh is. I don't care how wonderful your flesh is. It's an enemy to God. Because God has a way. That's so high you can't get over it. It's so low you can't get over it. It's so wide you can't, you can't get around it. So you just need to go somewhere and take a seat. And let God, God you have, you have your way. But see, some of the problem is, is that we don't see things like God sees them. Jesus. Uh, that's the flesh. Huh? 
Look like to me, God, that it ought to be like this. But you see, without faith, it's impossible to please God. God says, I don't want what you want me to have because uh, I'm God. That's the reason that when Cain and Abel brought the offerings to God, God had told them, bring me a blood offering. <laughs> when I see the blood, <laughs> I'll pass over. <laughs> Don't bring me what you done made up. Don't bring me what you think I want. <laughs> bring me what I said. <laughs> because when you bring and do what I said, then it produces faith. Because you're taking me at my word. You're recognizing that I know better than you know. Abel took a little lamb and killed the lamb and brought the blood offering to God. But Cain, Cain said, no, that's too easy. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to work. And I'm going to till the land. And I'm going to bring God all these vegetables and all this. And ain't God going to be proud of me? You see, God ain't proud of nothing but himself. God ain't proud of you. He, he said he looked at you and he thought about I, you wasn't nothing but dirt. <laughs> but you want to share God's glory with him. You want to be so wonderful that God, and that's how come they come to church and they don't never say nothing about God. They talk about the deacon, they talk about the preacher, they talk about the mother, they talk about all this and never say nothing about God. <laughs> but God said, I won't share my glory with you. I'm all in everything. So then, uh, Habakkuk, he said, come here, Habakkuk. I love about God is the fact that he's love. He's so long. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every time I want to give up on God, every time that I want to give up on God, somebody take this and put, get, get better. Every time that I want to give up on God, I think about how long suffering that he is with me. Every time the things begin to look like they want to get rough on me and everything, I think about God, how that you have taken me through. So he tells a backup, he said, a backup, come here. He ever called you to the side? He said, come here. So what I want you to do is, you caught up in what's going on around you. All I hear you talking about is complaining about how the conditions are. Get you up on your watchtower. Go up a little higher where you can see. I remember one February, it rained every day. And that's when I was coming back this way from off of that crack. The lady devil went and bought me some pants and bought me a plane ticket. We went to Dallas. When that plane took off, Brother Jeff, it kept climbing. And they said, we're 35,000 feet above the earth. And I noticed something when we got up above the clouds. I noticed the sun had been shining. All right. All the time. All the time. You ever seen All that? All the time. I hadn't seen the sun, Kathleen, in a, in a month. But all I had to do was go up a little higher. That's a little higher. Just a little higher. And I found out that the sun yeah. had been shining all the time. He said, get up on your watchtower. Yeah. When he got up on the watchtower, he said, tell me what you see. <laughs> what you see. Yeah. What you see. He said, well, the just <laughs> shall live by faith. Yeah. So in other words, no matter What's going what it looked like, I got to take you at your word. Yes, yes. Yes. Why is that, Pastor? Because faith is the substance yes. of things hopeful. Yes. Y'all don't understand. Shall yes. I'm living off of what I'm hoping for. I can't sit up here and tell you I got it. I can't sit up here and tell you I seen it. I can't tell you that I heard it. But what I hope for There's substance to what? And it's my faith. Yes. 
Yes. It's the evidence. It's the evidence. I ain't seen it, but I got evidence. I tell you what, when you take God at his word, we used to say it when we was little boys down around Hopkins store and everything. We used to tell them when we wanted to let them know, Brother Jeff, that we were really serious about what we were talking about. We used to tell them, I double dog dare you. I, I double dog dare you to take God at his word. I got about four witnesses here, Mother Brewer, that said, look at here. Things didn't get no better. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I'll run up out of here. They, they, it didn't get no back until I took him at his word. You see, I was running here and running there. I was looking for Clayton for somebody to assure me that what God said, that it was going to happen for me. But when I couldn't get no help, no matter where I went, I decided to say, let God be true and let every man please take a seat. God don't need your help. You're doing too much. You see, grace robs flesh of his glory. See, flesh wants to talk about what he did. Flesh wants to talk about how that's how come that in the church, they don't talk about the work of the cross until the end of the sermon. At the end of the sermon, then he tuned up and talked about one Friday evening. He went to the cross. But the whole message should be about what he did and not, please take a seat, and not what you did. It's only, it's only the blood. Yes. It's only what God did yes. that puts us in right position with him. And when I get out the way, yes. do I have about three witnesses that said, Pastor, it didn't, it, Pastor, did nothing break for me until I took a seat. Did, did, did nothing happen until I got out the way. My, my finances didn't get straightened until I put them in his hand. I put it all in his hand. And then the wind began to blow. The, the, the breakers began to dash. So the devil tried to bring fear in your heart that God wasn't going to do what he said that he was going to do. But I had to trust. I had to trust. I had to trust him. That's the reason Brother Marcus here. Can't nobody make me feel bad about it. God told me this morning, he said, look, he said, you're a trophy of grace. I know I look better than most folk. It ain't lost on me. I do. Sometimes I, I pass by like I pass by uh, 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 what used to be West Highland Furniture Company. And they got that big glass right there, and you can look over there and see yourself. And I'm riding in that luxury car, got my sunglasses on, tailor made suit, and all this right here, and everything. I said, Look at God. I said, Look at God. You see, because you don't know like I know. My nickname was Fleabag. I was Fleabag, but he said, You a trophy of grace. If you'll just get out the way, if you'll go somewhere and sit out, I'll take nothing and make something out of it. Everybody don't say this, but just them that know what I'm talking about. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, I lost, but I won. I lost, but I won. I lost, but I won. They left me for dead. They say, he'll never get back up again. But look what God did with my life. Look what God did. I eat where I want to eat. I wear what I want to wear. I'm happy every day. That's all right. Uh, he's working out all right. Look at John Romans, the fourth chapter. Look at Romans, the fourth chapter here. We bring it home. I got about seven minutes. So then, after God shows them in the first three chapters of Romans that without him, you can do nothing. You still got some people that want to put their hope in their flesh. That's when Paul said, look among you. Ain't many wise, many noble. Folks that's got degrees, I, I'm gonna tell you something. I thank God for Manasseh. <clears throat> because <laughs> you never seen this many people with degrees and stuff ain't got their nose stuck up in there. Oh yeah, 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 y'all say what you want to say. <laughs> Usually, you, when you go to town, you know the school teacher church. It's quiet as a mouse. Uh huh. And if you ain't got no degree or whatever, you just you can come, but you you know you don't say too much. You ain't nobody. You know what I'm saying. You won't never be on the trustee board. 
or nothing like that. Uh, and so uh, he says when he gets to chapter 4, Lady Deborah, because they held Abraham up real high. Because Abraham was the father of the Jews. Abraham, Isaac, then Jacob. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look what Paul says here as we go home. He says, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? You see, uh, they looked at Abraham as their fleshly father, but they didn't look at the spiritual father. You see, because what he produced in his flesh was Ishmael. Because God didn't move fast enough for him. And he went and got a slave woman. Not a free woman, but he went and got a slave woman and he had a child by her. It was Ishmael. But that child, once the child of the promise came, which was Isaac, Ishmael began to mock Isaac. Come on, Pastor. Uh, the struggle. Brother Bird. God saved me on his own. I wasn't trying to get saved. I didn't want to be saved. I liked it what I was doing. I was a happy heathen. When the other folk wanted to go home, I got mad. Uh-huh. When the liquor store closed, I went to Mr. Shannon. I'm looking for the boot bootlegger. Yeah. They didn't make a kind of dope that I wouldn't take. If they said it'll change how you feel, I didn't care what it was. I took it. But God saved me. But after God saved me, all right, all right. the preachers was preaching to me like I was still in the dope house. Instead of preaching and teaching me, you see, the Bible says that you have been translated. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Jurisdiction. You have been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. The rules, regulations that apply in Mississippi don't apply in Arkansas. Huh? Arkansas got a three-year statute of limitations on car wrecks. And many lawyers in Arkansas that have taken cases in Tennessee and got messed up because Tennessee's ain't but one year. It's just a matter of where you are. What you're saying, Pastor? What I'm saying is that when I believe the gospel, I'm living by faith. I was in the old man, Adam. I was up under condemnation. All right, all right. Yeah. But now, when I believed, the Bible said, by one spirit are we all baptized into the body of Christ. Now I am in the second Adam. Now I'm in Christ. That is why that I'm not in the flesh. I used to teach and I used to say that sometimes I'm in the spirit, sometimes I'm in the flesh. But I'm thinking about my actions and not what God has done. The Bible says, for ye are not in the flesh <laughs> because uh, you have the spirit of Christ. And if you, have the sp if you have not the spirit of Christ, you are none of his. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. So I can't live by my experience. I can't live by what I'm going through. But I live. And that's the reason that when Jesus was in the wilderness and he was hungry, they offered him some bread and he said, man shall not live by bread. I'm preaching right now. By bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth. The word is what's going to bring me up out of my situation. Not more money. The word is going to bring me out of this natural situation into what God already has preordained for me. What I, got. I got two minutes. So he says, uh, for if Abraham were justified by his works, he hath well to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God no works no times no vows to take no actions to change 
but he believed. I run up out of here. <laughs> Please take a seat. I never needed your help. I never needed you to help me. I got this thing because I'm God all by myself. I got Bible on it. In Ephesians, he says, before the foundation. You see, God is love. And you see, every good parent, before the child get here, they already got the bed there. They already got this right here. Oh, poor lady Deborah, I told us we ain't gonna never have nothing. Somebody, somebody, I, I wanted to buy the baby another chair, but I didn't find the chair I wanted, so I bought her an elephant. What that baby need an elephant for? I said, we ain't gonna never have. But a good parent, they got it already. They got it already. A good parent don't go out and buy no new car every year. And, and, and your child ain't never paid the first year, first year tuition ain't been paid for their college. Wow. They, they don't do that because I'm prepared. I got it. When you get ready to step in it, it's already there for you. You can't see it. I don't look here. I don't even tell you about it because if you knew about it, you get in there and mess it up. And so I got it for you when you step into it. All you need to do is take a seat. He said, Abraham believed God, and God counted unto him by faith. If you'll just believe me, because faith is the substance of things, hope for the evidence of things not seen. I'm not going to let you see it. I'm not going to let you experience it. The things that you experience in the day, you couldn't even imagine in your mind. The life that you live. The fact if you want to take a trip today, all you got to do is book it and go where you want to go. And when you go, you ain't going to be in no strain. You can eat what you want to do. Well, it was already ordained for you years ago. Back when you couldn't do back when you didn't have but you believed God and when time came yeah. <laughs> oh Lord let me wrap let me let me wrap this up Jesus. one one minute I'm really one minute over he says uh, look at verse four now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace but dead. Yeah. Yeah. If you got to get up and do something, it's not God's grace. You're getting paid. Uh huh. And that's the reason that you're running around talking about he's going to pay me for that, for that. He going to do this and he going to do that. You ain't paid nothing. Christ paid it all. Look at verse 5. He says, But to him, that worketh not. The one that went and took a seat. You ever notice how they get mad at us? Talking about y'all don't do this, y'all don't do that. I took a seat, baby. Oh, I run up out of here. I went and took a seat. Uh -huh. I found out what, Brother Hughes, I found out what the Sabbath really means. You see, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, talks about them that they could not find rest because they didn't believe God. God had told them, said, look here, I've already made the way for you to walk into the promised land. But when they got there, they sent out spies and they said, it's giants in the land. But the only people that believed God was Joshua and Caleb. And Joshua and Caleb said, we are well able. Why are you well able? Are you strong enough? No, because God said it. I believe God and if God said that we can go in and take the land we can possess. God did not bring me, I'm preaching right now, God did not bring me out not to bring me in. <laughs> Uncle George, the whole generation died in the wilderness because they could not believe God. Not that God couldn't bring them in, but they just wouldn't believe Y'all have to give me a couple minutes. I got to finish this. I'm sorry. He says, but to him, look at verse 5, but to him that worketh not, I ain't doing nothing else. I ain't finna have y'all out here no two or three weeks talking about we having revival. If God ain't revived you, you never will be. Uh -huh. He said, but to him that worketh not, then I'm gone and taking a seat, Mother Helen. They don't let God be God. You see, I can't, God can't be God because you're in the way. When I get out the way and let God have his way, but to him that worketh not, but... 
believeth on him. I'm looking at you as the author and the finisher. You're going to take care of this thing. You're getting ready to bring me in. I believe you, God. I tried it. I put my hands on it. I've been trying to work with it. I'm up on the condemnation and everything, but I found out when I put it in your hand. I can't preach no more. Clap your hands for the Lord. <laughs>